they're going to need some rebound seasons for their offense to be a top offense again. It wasn't last year. Essentially, it was Aaron Judge and John Carlos Stanton and pray for rain. Uh, Le DJ LeMayu was an MVP, serious MVP candidate the two previous years. He had a hernia he played through last year. Does he come back to his 1920 levels? To your point, do we get more of the Texas Joey Gallo than the guy who played two months with the Yankees last year? Glaber Torres, is he the Glaber Torres we saw when he broke through, like when he looked like he was going to be one of the better young players in the sport or the guy from the last two years? Was the bad end to last year for Anthony Rizzo COVID-related? There's a lot of ifs and buts. There's a very high end for this, and there's a more questionable end for this, but it's probably more questions about a Yankee offense than we've had in a while. 100%, and then, uh, listen, I know this is two weeks away, and the Yankees are going to keep their fingers crossed. This vaccination scenario, go ask the Nets. With Kyrie, this could be a major problem. I mean, I'm assuming there's a couple of Yankees who may not be able to play, in, and then also not play in Toronto the nine or ten games. Do you think the Yankees are concerned, Joel? you think they're going to say, you know what, two and a half weeks is a long time, things change, and hasn't changed in months. What's your take on the whole vaccination process with the Yankees playing home games in New York? Remember, this isn't just the Yankees. They go first. The Mets, are, I believe their home opener is April 15th. And I'm pretty sure that the Mets had one of the lowest player vaccination rates last year, just over 50%. Now, maybe some of those guys are gone, but some of them are still here. And we'll find out about them on April 15th if nothing in New York has changed. I think both teams are trying to stay quiet about it but are confident things are going to change. But, Chris, I'm with you. And the rules haven't changed for the basketball for Kyrie Irving all year. Will it change in time for the NBA playoffs? We'll see. Will it ch change in time for April 7th, Yankee opening day? I guess the answer is we'll see. I, the rule does feel a little strange to me. The numbers in New York were much worse for COVID last year during the season, and everyone played through that last year. So this is a new rule at a time where COVID is a little lower in New York. So does some logic step in here? But it's got to be a concern for both teams. I know guys, I won't say it on air, who I'm pretty sure are not vaccinated, and it's star-level players on both New York teams. 100%. All right, are you surprised? I know you've written a lot about it. No Freeman, uh, no Correa. So the Yankees are going to go with the, you know, uh, sort of a step-in shortstop. The young kids, and you know, outside of Donaldson, the Yankees really didn't exactly spend a ton of money. They bought the 50 million back, and that is it there. Does that surprise you as far as the offseason goes? Plus Rizzo, and look, Chris, I think part of this answer is the answer to your first question, which is they've got a 250 to 260 million dollar payroll. It's tied up in Stanton, Judge, Gallo, Donaldson, LeMayu, Rizzo, Hicks. And if those guys perform, maybe not me, but you're a good athlete, you could probably play shortstop for them as long as you catch the ball. So the money has to play here. It, for the most part, didn't last year. If it does, I expect that the Yankees will be one of the two to four best teams in the American League. The question is if it does, and I will say this, it's a very early read on Isaiah kind of Falefa. You know, he reads as a baseball player, and a baseball player is more valuable on a good team than he is on a bad team. I remember Scott yep. Brocious coming over to the Yankees from Oakland. It didn't make any sense on Oakland. Like, the skill set he had didn't play, but it played with the Yankees brilliantly. I wonder if Kaina Falefa is more valuable to the Yankees than he was to a losing team in Texas. And then we're going to see. The Yankees haven't produced a heck of a lot of positional talent over the last quarter of a century. They believe in two different shortstops, Oswald Peraza and especially Anthony Volpe, and they made a bet against going after anyone in the greatest shortstop free agent class ever. So we're going to see is I Isaiah kind of Falefa, a baseball player who can help a good team, and are Anthony Volpe and Oswald Peraza really good prospects for a team that hasn't produced a lot of good positional prospects who aren't named Aaron Judge over the last 20 years. Yeah, good point. Good player on a – he might be a good player on a good team. A last point, and that's the starting rotation. They need Severino, Cole, 
I mean, after that, you know, John Montgomery, Cortez, I mean, are you confident they have enough? Maybe they make the move with the A's. Are you confident they have enough starting pitching right now to get them through a season and then to win some big playoff games when they're down two games to one they got to pitch a fourth starter? What's your take on that? So, again, I would talk about money playing. Luis Severino signed a four-year contract extension after back-to-back -back years of almost winning the AL Cy Young. He's hardly pitched since then, the th first three years. This is the fourth year of that contract. If he pitches like the Cy Young guy, the Yankees have as pretty close to as good a one-two punch with Cole and Severino as anyone in the league. Will that happen? I really thought that Jamison Tyon came along last year. It doesn't blow you away, but Jordan Montgomery was a legitimate 3-4 starter. And then is Nesta Cortez, was that a fluke? Remember Aaron Small in the mid to early 2000s? Yeah. He had a brilliant yes. year for the yes. Yankees and then disappeared the next year. So is Cortez that, or is that funky delivery?